Hey guys, so it is like extremely hot in our house right now, um, so I do have a fan on because I don't want our pets to be overheating, but hopefully it won't be too noisy. But this is an extremely irritating argument I've had with Christians, ranging from progressive ones to young earth creationists. I feel like it should be common sense considering, well, we're not fungi or plants, but alas, here we are. Um, going forward, I will note, I'm not a biologist, I am simply very autistic, <laughs> but I will do my best to explain things, and I feel like this video does it sufficiently, but if you want a more in-depth look at some of the arguments against, uh, creationist anthropocentrism, I'd recommend checking out some videos I've linked below by Gutsit Gibbon, a primatologist and anthropologist. With that out of the way, let's get into it. So this video will mainly have two sections. One, why do so many Christians believe humans are not animals or that we're uniquely special animals if we are? And two, what actually makes us animals and debunking some of the general talking points used to say that we're at least above or fundamentally different from other primates. When discussing why so many Christians feel this way, the very simple answer is that their theology dictates that we were created in the image of God, we have souls, though some denominations do believe non-human animals have souls as well, and other various theological talking points concerning free will or a relationship with God. But why is this so important to them? Why can't this all be true and also be true of other species? Why do humans have to be unique? Christianity, even outside of the sense of anthropocentrism, tends to lean into the idea of exceptionalism, whether it's the Israelites, Christians themselves, or humans as a species. As I've stated in the past, many religions, whether created with this purpose in mind or not, are meant as means of control. God is infallible, so the men who speak through him are as well. To question them is to question God. Where this comes into play regarding anthropocentrism is that this grants humans a unique status of being able to not only abuse and manipulate other animals in the environment, but it also makes the believer feel special. People like to feel special, to feel validated. Even on an individual level, this gives people a feeling of control that they need not feel guilty over. It gives validation to their beliefs, how lucky they were to be born as one of God's people instead of as a rabbit or a crow, that they should be thankful to their God for this life. And in turn, that level of emotional comfort and feelings of importance can now be shaped and sculpted by the religion and those who represent it. Christianity relies on this idea of exceptionalism as one of its many, many means of emotional manipulation. Beliefs with a little substantial support often turn away from trying to convince people through evidence or merit and assert various techniques of emotional manipulation. I've talked about this in other videos, but things such as fear of hell, the comfort of an afterlife, being looked after and cared for by God, and indoctrination targeting vulnerable individuals all play a part in this as well. The idea that you personally are special, that God loves you and made you in his image, that you are different is a powerful means of control and emotional manipulation. It's something that's often seen within abusive relationships, relating to the contrasting ideas that all of us are sinners or threats of hell. You're special, you're loved, is used as the love bombing to create a sense of attachment and even obligation or debt, before being striked with the idea that you're inherently a disgusting, sinful creature who must repent to that same being who created you in his image and loves you deeply. Humans need to be different for Christianity to function, because if we're not, why would God love us? Why do our lives not have the same value as a cow or a mouse? How else do we explain all these advancements that we have without invoking ideas that may challenge our theology? But ultimately, humans are animals. I do wonder how many people that posit that we're different would classify other extinct humans, other great apes in the homo genus. Are Neanderthals, Homo habilis, and Homo erectus made in God's image as well? Do they have souls? Can they sin? Are they animals? If not, then why? They exhibit pretty much everything that people point to in Homo sapiens as being unique. They crafted jewelry and art. They buried and mourned their dead. They formed cultures and communities. They had speech and told stories, and they used tools and fire. If they are, then what makes us as Homo sapiens unique? They were different species. So are other intelligent animals, such as gorillas and orcas, also not animals? Is an orangutan not an animal because they use medicine? Are crows not animals because they exhibit altruism and moral structures? While many people claim that humans are unique due to our advancements from cars to laptops to written languages to Xanax, none of these things are actually unique to humans when they're broken down. A phone, for example, is a tool, and it's not a tool that most humans could create on their own. We have the advantage of written language, of being able to share knowledge and inventions over generations. But I doubt if anyone watching this video was dropped on a desert island, they'd be creating antibiotic pills or iPhones or planes. If you didn't have access to centuries-long compilations of knowledge, how would your lifestyle fundamentally differ from that of another non-human great ape? 
Orangutans have used topical medicinal plants that have been used by local humans for centuries and have actual proven efficacy. Crows and rats exhibit altruism, even at a personal loss. Other great apes and some monkeys understand syntax and vocalizations and use it. Elephants bury their dead and even position them intentionally to do as such. How does this make medicine, language, morality, or ritual uniquely human? All of these things are just taken to greater extremes, but are still fundamentally the same processes. And again, many of them are only able to be taken to that degree of extremity through centuries of shared knowledge, not on an individual basis. And even for other animals, many behaviors are exhibited only when taught or witnessed by adults of their species. This is even observable within domestic animals that are orphaned, or orphan wildlife that's unable to be released due to not knowing certain skills, cautions, or social behaviors of their species. There is no good reason to claim that humans aren't animals. We are taxonomically, behaviorally, and evolutionarily animals. We are no more special and no more worthy and no different. That shouldn't be looked at as a bad thing, and reassessing the value that you give to non-human animals should be the reaction to that, not an assumption that it's an undervaluing of human life to say as such. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hade. I stare at the populace in prayer.